نحمده نحمده ونصلي ونسلم على رسوله الكريم وصحبه واتباع الحمات الذين القويم سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم جعلنا دعاة إليك وإلى رسولك اللهم صل على سيدنا وشفيعنا وحبيبنا ومولانا محمد مبارك وسلم وقال الله سبحانه وتعالى في القرآن الكريم فعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولا تزر وازرة وزر أخرى وإن تدعو مثقلة إلى حملها لا يحمل منه شيء ولو كان ذا القربى إنما تنذر الذين يحشون ربهم بالغيب وأقاموا الصلاة ومن تزكى فإنما يتزكى لنفسي وإلى الله المسير صدق الله وصدق رسوله الكريم وبعد إن الحمد إن الحمد لله تعالى All praise and all glory is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We praise and thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the opportunity to be here on Yawm al-Jum'ah this blessed day of the week in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala benefits us and rewards us Subhanallah, this Jummah, this Friday, only last week Friday, from all of the rains and the flooding that we would have had, we should all, through the mercy and grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the halat and the condition that we still are alive and we still have the comfort of being around each other. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, wala nablu wanna kum bi shay'i min al ju'i wal dual ju'i wal naqsimil al amwali wal anfusi wa samarat wa bashir as sabirin. That Allah will test the human beings from various types of tests, from the loss of wealth, property, the loss of life. Wa bashir as sabirin and give glad tidings to those who are patient, who endure these tests. So for those brothers and sisters within our community and within the country would have lost some things. We say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for them, grant them the patience and the endurance. With it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yastabdil ha, Allah replaces it with something even better and good. Maybe we'll, something will come out of it that is even better. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for them. My dear brothers and sisters, it is through the infinite mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the wisdom and the hikmat in the Quran, the wisdom in the Quran for us to take and ponder over so that it may be a reflection for a transformation in our lives. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran a very important lesson in the relationship of this being that we are, this human being that we are. And the human being that we are, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in the Quran, and He says, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Wala taziru wa ziratun, wizra ukhura. That no individual, their burden, their load, their challenges, their trials, and their tests in life will be taken by another individual in this life nor in the next life the test that has to come before every individual will be a test for us no one is going to replace that may Allah subhanahu wa save us from the challenge when that test comes before us of how we will react or what we will do at that point in time وَإِن تَدْعُوا مُثْقَلَةٌ If this is something that is heavy, a great burden, a great challenge for us, إِلَى حِمْلِهَا In carrying it out, in 
actually enduring that test and that trial? If it is something so difficult and heavy for us to carry out. La yuhmal. La yuhmal. Minhu shay'un. No other person will still not be able to take on that burden for you. As big as it is. And we ask ourselves. Such test that comes before an individual, we cannot replace or take away from it. As big as it can be or as small as it can be. But we can render our support or our assistance in whatever way we can. But we cannot take away the fact of what happens to an individual, to an entire kaum, an entire community, to an entire country, to an entire nation and people at large. We may not be able to take away those things, but we can do other things. Make dua for that person. Do render some assistance to that person. But that is only in the respect or in relationship to this particular test. But interestingly, And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, even if this test be to someone who is close to you, Subhanallah, we have people, families, your child becomes sick. It affects you in so many ways. But yet, that sickness is not upon you. It is upon your child. And you will do anything possible to rid that sickness, but still, it is still upon this child. What little qurba? Even it is someone lawkana dhul qurba innama tundiru alladheena. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the interpretation and the ayat tells us innama tundiru your job is only to warn. Your job is only to inform innama tundiru yakhshawna rabbahum that they have fear Consciousness, awareness of their Rabb, their Lord. To become aware that the circumstances that surround our lives, the tests, the trials, the condition that face us every day, your job is only to bring them to the awareness, the consciousness. Yakshawna Rabbahum to become conscious and aware of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the relationship of your message. And who is this Rabb? Rabbil Ghaib, the Lord of the Unseen. The Lord that prepares a Jannah, a paradise for us. The Lord that has created a thing called Taqdeer, Qadr, that we cannot see, that occurs, that, that time will come, the fore unforeseen circumstances that are before us, but yet the reality of it is not before us. This is the Allah, the Rabb. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives in the ayat and says, وَأَقَامُ الصَّلَاةِ Then establish worship. وَمَنْ تَزَكَّى And whoever purifies themselves. In many of the ayats of the Quran and verses in the Quran, there's a combination with the ayat that says, the two words that come together, وَإِقَامِ الصَّلَاةِ وَإِتَاءِ الزَّكَى and you'll find this established prayer and pay zakah. Because the both of them do a particular job and a very important principle and foundation that they maintain a level of purification. The salah purifies us. Zakah purifies our mal, our wealth for our sustenance, our nourishment. But their job in the Quran, they are co continuously mentioned together for a purpose so that we will understand that there in it lies a purification. And even when the ayat speaks of it in its individual sense, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, Qad man Allah says, successful is the one who purifies themselves. He says in the next ayat, Qad man وَقَدْ خَابَ مَنْ دَسَّا 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, indeed, the one who purifies themselves, indeed, is successful. وَمَنْ خَابَ And the one who remains in filth, one who finds himself occupied, that they become consumed in that which is bad. Dasaha. It destroys that individual. It causes frustration and hardship on the life of that individual. But Allah says, salah, That you establish salah. And who purifies themselves by this means. Then he says, Then that purification is for himself. He purifies himself. He becomes pure, strong, steadfast. He has the ability to withstand the challenges, the test that is before him, by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. By the permission of Allah. Because Allah gives him that comfort with his salah, with his purification. And in this ayat, in this end, it says, وَإِلَى اللَّهِ الْمَسِيرُ Unto Allah is our end return. Recognizing that whatever the circumstances in a person's life, when mouth and death comes, even the sick person is cured. When death comes, even the sick person is cured. Because there is nothing to worry after about sickness. No amount of medication again. Even the trials of this world is over. Then comes the next world. That's why, وَإِلَى اللَّهِ الْمَسِيرُ Understanding the return, where we are going, means preparation is also important for us. In the life of a human being, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has given to us a very important part of understanding the psyche, the condition of this human being. Who we are and what we are about. And so it is mentioned in relationship towards what we are, or what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made us out to be. They says and mention in relationship to the muhadithin and commentators of a hadith, they mention and say to us that the human being and the body of the human being consists of three important elements that transforms our thinking, our ability, the way we are and who we are. And these three elements, they are ad-deenu. One, ad-deenu. فَجَعَلَ الْإِسْلَامُ مَصْلِحَةُ الْدِينِ That Allah made the deen, al-Islam, this way of life, the practical aspect of the shara'i, the pillars of Islam, all of these laws and relationship that is found in the Quran as a means and a benefit for the deen, the asliha, the perfection and the right outcome and benefit for the human being. So the knowledge of the deen and the aspect of the deen that is most important to us is knowledge and the way we relate to this knowledge. Then, وَالْإِيمَانُ لِمَصْلِحَةِ aql. The knowledge, not just of ilm or aql, but now the aql here is not just talking about ilm, it is talking about the aspect of relating to your iman and understanding from this knowledge that Allah has blessed you. You can look at the creation of Allah and recognize from the knowledge that you have that I need to submit to Allah. That I can relate to my life and my conditions back to the ilm and the knowledge that Allah has given to me. Two important elements of this deen. And then he says, Wal ihsan li maslihatil ruh. And ihsan, the combination of our iman and our Islam, is the rectification for the inside of here. It is the rectification and the understanding that brings peace and aman within a person's mind and in his heart. If 
we are not in this condition and have not found a balance between our ilm, our knowledge, that's our deen, our Islam. And we have not found that balance of spirituality in our iman and our aql and reasoning. And not combine them with our iman, then we are in big trouble. Over the last couple of weeks and even this morning we heard over the media that for the people who are suffering from the effects of the flood, that they're going to offer to them some level of counseling. For they might have some level of psychological effect on their minds and their behavior because of what they lost. And over the media and the press over the time, you'd see everybody talking about what they lost. No doubt what you lost may have some value. But what is more important than the value is your life. That you have been given a life and you can still see that opportunity to see a next day. And sometimes we complain. We complain about lost and we complain about the effects of these things and nothing. And everybody, sometimes when you're sick, you still complain. Something happens to you, you make some request. You make some, share some information to someone so that someone would listen to your cries. You want people to know. But what is the end result of that? That something is affecting who we are, my dear brothers and sisters. The condition of the ummah today and the world today is that we have lack and we are falling apart in the balance that Allah has given us in the Quran and the deen. We are falling apart in the balance that Allah has established for the human beings and the way that Allah has established the human beings. What is that right condition for the human beings to, that they should attain itminan, tranquility in their lives? What is lacking in our whole psyche today? That today the elements that affect us are so much so much, be it the room that we call the psychological environment that play in our minds, that people seem the whole entire system of the world has directed us into thinking and believing that if we don't have appliances, if we don't have the things that comforts, comforts us in our home, if we don't have a car, we cannot live in society. So the whole concept is that we think if we don't have these things, we don't belong. We are considered to be poor. We are considered to be somebody like a vagrant. And that is one thing that is affecting the minds of people. And people who are in the condition of living in poverty every day and live in such a social environment that they are affected like this. When they would see a young boy or young girl see someone comes to give something to their parents or the parents make demand for something from them so that they can ease their plight and their burden and that person comes now and abuses their rights makes them feel embarrassed and then gives them something and how would this child look at that individual and then look at the rest of the world it affects his thinking it affects this child all the way and it goes further that the environment that we live in, it also affects our biological nature. What we consume today and what we eat and what we see as legal and illegal and what is haram from the drugs that our children are using and the types of food that we are eating, it is affecting our minds. And these three social elements and these aspects of physical and psychological environment is what this deen is telling us. Our Islam, our Iman, and our Ihsan. And in Surah al bayna in Surah al bayna Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, A'udhu billahi minash shaitan rajeem, Rasulun min Allah yatlu suhufan mutahara, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent 
Rasulun min Allah, a messenger from Allah, yatluhu suhufam mutahara. That would read to them, would give the signs, the ayats of what? Suhufam mutahara. Clear, pure signs. That is a level of purity, subhanallah. The ta'aluk and the connection of this surah in relationship in relationship to the previous surahs that were there, surah number 96 and 97 of Surah Al-Alaq and Surah Al-Qadr that gives the connection to this surah, Surah al bayina as a means of the Quran and the relationship of the message of the Quran and the messenger. Rasul min Allahi yatlu suhufam mutahara that Allah sent this message with such a messenger that will make a distinction in the lives of the people that the condition of the people will change because what the Quran has to offer what the wives of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his companions would have said of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Aisha radiallahu ta'ala said that he was a walking Quran but the relationship of the Quran when it affected the lives of the Sahabas, the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they became loving to one another. They will not leave each other in the cold as we would say. Their relationship and their bond grew strong in his midst. That they would share their wealth, their love, their protection, their God. Their family life will be so sacred to each other. Because Rasulun min Allahi yatlu suhufam mutahara. He became the, that gem, that prophet who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has brought, that has transfused and made the lives of these people who were so dear before Allah, who were dear to their Rasul, become changed with Iman. They receive the purification that is needed from their ilm to their amal, to their actions, to their ihsan, their good qualities in their heart. That their hearts were affected and they become loving to each other. Knowledge, ihsan, iman. They attained it. In our society today, if we would only understand what happened in that ayat, subhanAllah, we don't have time for it. But in our society, in our own communities, that effect today has eroded, it's become dwindling away. Little of it stays within us today. Because to each and every one of us, there is some level of infighting even in our families, in our home, in our masajids, in our community. Where is the iman? Where is the ihsan? Where is the consciousness and awareness? What is affecting it? The whole society has gone into a silent psychological path that is destroying their minds. Because they lack that level of spiritual guidance and ilm and knowledge of what they were created for, what the human beings will benefit from. It is just like the human beings who have made appliances. You know, we make appliances and cars and so many different things. And there's a warning sign. If you use it like this, it will do what? It will malfunction, it will go mad. If you input the wrong things into these appliances or into what we make, they will malfunction and they will go mad and they will function in crazy ways. The human being who Allah has made, the Rabb who has made this creation, made this human being, also made a manual for this human being. Made a direction that we should follow and if we follow what Allah says and what He has shown through the messenger, through the exact Example, Rasulun min Allahi yatlu suhufam mutahara. That perfect example of what it means to become pure and establish in our life a life of purity, a life of itminan is found in the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Total purity, total tranquility, a balanced mind. 
is in the Quran. And if we go against what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, every time you go against it, then you go further and further away and you start to malfunction like what society does today. They malfunction. And we cover up the drugs in our society like that. So we are using, the, our children are using drugs, our community is using drugs and the effects of the drugs, we don't see nothing about it. We use some other laws and try and make it washed away to some kind of simple thing. But the evil that comes out of it is harming us every day and we're not doing anything about it. Likewise for alcohol and for every other ill and every other haram that comes apparent and becomes normal in a society it affects our psyche and our behavior. Because Allah says those things will bring more wrath, more dysfunction in the life of the human beings. We were not created for that. But those were the, what the temptation of the nafs. My dear brothers and sisters, whilst we live in an environment like this, it is absolutely important for us to pay heed and become conscious and aware of what is happening to us. Because the Quran tells us an interesting ayat, which I'll close with. It says, Do not kill your children. Do not kill your children out of the fear of poverty. And we relate that 1400 years plus ago and we'll say that they used to bury their children in Jahiliya in ignorance out of fear and shame of their children. So they bury their daughters alive. But you know what is more shameful? After having Iman and knowing what is right and understanding that we should save Save yourself and save your children from the fire of hell. Understand the title of the connection here. That do not kill your children out of fear of poverty. Today we educate our children only to have a good job, to get some good money, to earn the rights of this world. Never mind they don't pray. Never mind they don't have no condition of their Iman. Never mind they don't believe in Iman. Never mind they don't have anything of this deen in their lives. Not that you should not give them this, but there is no balance. There is no balance, my dear brothers and sisters. Who is to account for this? Who will be held responsible for this? Are we going to leave our children to go into a society of chaos and destruction when we have not done our jobs? We fear poverty still today. We fear destruction for our children, but indeed we are actually putting them into destruction. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save you and me and protect us from this fitna. Sadaqallah wa sadaqa rasulil kareem wa ahmudan alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.